Recently I assembled another of my power supply switch boxes and I figured it deserves its own video. The emergency stop button doubles here as a main power switch. Hi, I'm Stuyo and welcome to my garage. I like consistencies throughout my project so these enclosures were modeled after my fanatic kill switch. If you are interested in building one, it will have its own video pretty soon. The current enclosures are meant to hold the main power switches for the power supplies of my various sim racing hardware. Power lines are secured on the bottom with standard PG7 electrical cable fittings. I designed two size of boxes fitting up to 32 or 40 mm sized switches. They are roomy enough to accept at least two Vago Quick connectors inside. As always the design is modular so I can move around and rearrange them as well as I please. Bigger version is intended for use with the newest version of the emergency stop switches I could find on AliExpress. They feature a modular design and are a little below 40 mm on the longer side. The offset of the switches that you can see here was taken into account and the box is roomy enough to fit them. You can select on your order normally open or close contacts or different colors and voltage of the LED indicator. Quick connect system is very handy and works extremely well. Spring loaded mechanism has very nice tactile feel and sound if this is important for you. The Quick Connect system features stacking so you can mix and match and break out multiple circuits with a single button. The actuator mechanism features another Quick Connect and we start by removing the switch array from it. Then remove the retention nut, place it on the box top and screw it back in. Put the switch array back in so you can adjust to the correct position. Tighten the retention nut all the way and check the positioning again. Eat until you are satisfied with the alignment. Then simply tighten the retention screw. The actuator quick connect helps immensely with the general assembly. Let's test fit one more time final alignment. As you can see we have enough space here for some quick connectors for cable breakout. As I will be breaking both neutral and face line cables, I will use two of the orange switches. The orange ones are normally connected, which means basically that the button is up, I will have connection and when I press the button, I will break the connection. The blue buttons are normally open, which means they switch the connection on when the button is pressed. This is not how we intend to use the emergency switch. Connecting the light indicator is pretty straightforward. You just need the two short jump wires. For consistency, better use the same wires all around and maintain the color coding. First, we make a short jumper wire for the neutral part of the indicator and we put it in the input side. It will connect to the neutral wire leading to your main outlet on the input. In the same fashion, we prepare a short jumper wire for the white line. Same procedure, strip one end, measure, bend in the middle, strip the other, twist the wires and connect it at the corresponding terminal. This wire will be connecting on the other side of the switch, so the light works only when the switch is in the on position. It will be connected to the second switch which will be terminating the face wire. On the back end we have another straightforward assembly. Simply slide all the way in the electrical power cable fittings in their corresponding places. Here I am using the rather small PG7 fittings but this is what I currently have in stock. On the other side put the retention nut and tighten it with pliers. I will be including in the files back cover except in PG8 fittings but keep in mind I never tested those. To complete this part simply slide in the cable through the electrical fitting. The cable I'm using here is 3 by 1.5 square millimeters, so it's rather thick. The outside diameter of 8 millimeters, this cannot pass through the PG7 fitting. I drill the fitting with an 8 millimeter bit in order for the cable to fit. To actually connect the cable, we start off by stripping the top isolation. Be extremely careful not to cut through the underlying wires isolation. As you are working with mains power, in my case 220 volts, if you are not sure what you are doing, better do not attempt this project. 
trip the wife and neutral wires and prepare them for connecting to their corresponding terminals. So I didn't strip enough of the isolation initially, I had to do it two times. Twist the wire ends and you are ready to attach them to their terminals. Start with the neutral wire and we are still working on the input side. Slide both incoming and white jumper wire on each side of the terminal connector. Tighten the retention screw and check if the connection is properly made. And do the other switch which will be accepting the wife face wire. Tighten properly and inspect the stability of the connection. At the end you should get something like this. Both input wires terminated in each switch and the boot jumper wires for the white connected to the neutral line on the input side. Next we have to deal with the grounding wire. I will be using a Vago Quick connector which requires between 10 and 12 mm of wire strip to make the proper connection. With the wire properly stripped, open one side of the Vago Quick connector, slide the wire all the way in and close it off. Inspect it and make sure the wire is completely in contact with the connector rail. At this stage it was time for a quick test. Connected the other jumper white wire to the output side of the face wind switch. As you can see, everything is working properly as expected. Set earlier, for the final assembly, the quick connector for the button actuator comes very handy. With the actuator disconnected, slide the switch assembly to the enclosure housing and connect it on the other end. For demonstration purposes, I will continue this step with the button and switches connected together. Again I am using my favorite M3 countersunk black screws together with the aluminium washers for extra style. With the top cover half in you can see how well everything fits together. Still have enough space to fit the Vago Quick connector and still be able to access the quick release from inside. When I connect the output cable which will be done in place, I will have to simply slide in the switch assembly in the box and connect the quick release. I will disconnect it now so I can finish the front panel assembly easier. I will just tighten all four screws step by step until everything fits in place. Tighten all the way in and you're done. This is the finished assembly from the front end. When second cable is connected I will simply slide in the switch assembly, connect it and close the back end. Here's a short demo of how this is will look in theory. Now let's imagine we have connected the two cables. Then we'll just simply slide in the back cover in place. The output cable will be connecting to the corresponding switch for neutral and phase wind and to the Vago connector for the grounding. Screw in the back cover with M3 mounting hardware. Once done, make sure you're not pulling the cable too much and still have some lead free lead inside the box and close off the electrical fittings. More or less, this would be the finished product. Mounting bracket is very tight and it simply clicks in place on one of the sides wherever you select. It has a single M6 mounting hole and it's intended to be mounted sideways on 40 or 30 series profile. To remove, simply unclip with a screwdriver. It is pretty tight. Now that we have assembled our switch, we can mount it. Pretty satisfying, click A. Here all the cables were already connected and the mounting brackets were put in place. The only thing left was to clip on the switches in their place. A simple and fun project which incorporates both power and safety switch for my various power supply units. It's stylish and in line with my other sim racing hardware. As always it is modular and very easy to rearrange, reassemble and move around my rig setup. As I hate cables, especially power lines, everything is hidden assembled properly, secured and out of reach. You can see safety was taken in full consideration. Hope you have fun with this project and see you next time.